Hello, and thank you for joining us for this brief conversation on the notice of admission. My name is Christina Andrews, the Director of Professional Services at ACCESS. I come to you as a strategic leader in home-based care with 20 years of operational experience. My goal is to deliver practical operational solutions to help our clients scale their operations using access technology for home health, home care, hospice, and palliative sectors. Prior to joining Access, I was a Senior Manager of Growth Solutions at Symmetry Healthcare Consultant, formerly known Simeon Healthcare Consultant, LLC. I am joined by my lovely colleague, Sophia. Sophia? Hi there. I am Sophia Saldivar, and I am a Home Health Product Manager here at Access with about 12 years experience in home health specifically, starting in roles from billing uh, all the way up to administrator and CFO. And so I come to you with some knowledge on industry as well as some solution updates. Thank you. All right, so our objective today is to talk about the notice of admission which is part of the final phase of the PDGM, which began in 2019, and really followed an evolution of transitioning from 60% of the anticipated payment upfront to 20% in 2020, to upfront payments being completely phased out in 2021 with the no pay wrap. The NOA submission is a new process that will replace the RAP submission process. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to review the purpose of the NOA, as well as discussing the operational submission process and you know, what, what information is required, um, in addition to the exception request process. We will then transition into the Access Home Health Solution Training Demo on the NOA, as well as highlighting support and resources for you and your organization to assist you during this transition process. The notice of admission is a one-time submission that establishes the home health plan of care, and it covers the patient services for a contiguous 30-day plan of care until the patient discharges. Again, this is replacing the no pay wrap system that was in place for 2021 for home health claims. Please keep in mind, organizations must submit an NOA to the Medicare Administrative Contractor, also known as your MAC, within five calendar days from the start of care date. Operational submission process requires an NOA to be submitted for any existing patients who has had a PDGM payment period that starts on or after January 1st, 2022, or who are newly admitted to home health services after the state. Existing patients who are continuing care into 2022 must have an NOA submitted with a one-time artificial admission date that corresponds with the from date of the first payments period of continuing care in 2022. CMS only requires one NOA for any series of home health plan of cares. Again, once you report a discharge, Medicare will require you to send a new NOA before you submit any additional claims. Items that are required. You must have a verbal or written order from the physician that contains services required for the initial visit. A CMS has clarified that an initial visit is required for an initial NOA submission, meaning a billable start of care visit must be completed. However, for current patients NOA submissions, organizations can use the start date of the billing period to serve as the service line date to submit the NOA. The NOA only needs to contain a primary diagnosis, which can be generic in nature. An OASIS assessment does not need to be completed prior to submitting the NOA nor does the plan of care need to be sent to the physician. Please keep in mind that untimely submissions of the NOA will result in a daily penalty equaling to 1 30th reduction to the wage adjusted 30-day payment. Now this will apply to each day 
from the home health start a care date until the agency submits the NOA. This payment reduction also applies to outlier payments. NOA exceptions. An organization can request for an exception for an NOA submitted outside the five calendar day window for only these four qualifying circumstances. First, if there's a fire, a flood, an earthquake, or any other unusual events that inflict extensive damage to the agency's ability to operate. The second area for an exception is an event that produces a data filing problem due to CMS or MAC symptom issues, which is beyond your control. Third, you're a newly Medicare certified agency that is notified of certification after the Medicare certification date. Four, which is awaiting user ID from its MAC. Then last but not least, other circumstances that CMS or your MAC determines to be beyond your control. We've included a list of references that we've used for our conversation today. Please feel free to use these links to visit the Office of the Federal Register, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, reviewing the final rule, which was released on November 9th, 2021. Also, MLN Matters, and last but not least, DGS, the new 2022 Home Health Notice of Admission, which was released on September 28th, 2021. Now, let's transition into our Access Home Health Solution Training Demo. Hi, good day. Once you are logged into Access, and you do have the appropriate permissions for billing, you'll want to go to the list of insurances. So you'll be able to navigate to that through the view opportunity here. And you'll want to identify those managed care payers that you know are going to be needing those uh, updates for the notice of admission changes. Because Medicare by default will already have all of these changes implemented, it's important for us to focus our time and energy into our HMO and other managed care payers to ensure that we are billing properly and that those NOAs are submitted timely if there are any additional uh, changes that that payer may need, you are able to edit them here as well. We'll identify that edit action and our items here to review will pop up. Because the NOA is a progression of the changes uh, that CMS created with the PDGM change in billing, we want to make sure that we have included effective dates for those previous changes. Uh, all of this is a succession to the notice of admission. So we uh, want to ensure that we are aware of that by ensuring these options are checked off with the appropriate dates uh, effective for that payer. Once we have that information identified, then we can identify whether or not this particular payer will be uh, participating in the notice of admission. We can identify that here, as well as identifying that effective date. And we can proceed on to the next column, or the next question, rather. Utilize this box if your payer has identified that they will only be accepting final claims. Wraps and NOAs both apply. Any effective date that you include here will override any other effective date currently implemented in the solution. Once you've finalized your HMO payer setup, it's time to get into the billing center. To do this, you'll be able to navigate from the billing button at our top menu and enter the billing center. When you're here in the billing center, the first change that you'll notice is that our filter now includes our NOAs uh, to be part of that first page that we see uh, when opening our billing center. If there are any wraps that are delayed or there are any uh, managed care payers that are episodic that need for that wrap to still be submitted, you can go ahead and uh, find those claims in here as well. 
Next, you'll see our aging column. Just as before, this is going to be aging those NOAs to identify their risk level for submission and acceptance. Uh, as Christina was mentioning, those claims do need to be submitted and accepted by Medicare to identify that that notice of admission has been uh, received by CMS, as well as updated into the eligibility uh, HEDA system. So we'll go ahead and look at a claim. We'll open up this claim here for this patient, Tepper. And when we're in the claim, the first thing that you'll notice is that we do have this window identified now as our NOA. Another place that we're identifying this NOA is the very important bill type. So you'll see here that we have the 3-2-A identifier for that type of bill. You'll also see that we have a generic HIPS code utilized here. This is the same generic HIPS code that we utilize for our no pay wrap transition during PDGM. So we'll keep to utilizing this for our NOAs. Remember that this HIPS code does not determine payment, only the HIPS code on the final claim in conjunction with a submitted OASIS determines reimbursement for that particular patient's billing period. The other thing I want to identify is our primary diagnosis. This particular primary diagnosis is a placeholder. It can be generic. So when you're admitting a patient, if you do, if you do not currently have a primary diagnosis or a center of care, you can go ahead and identify one of the diagnoses within that care plan for the patient uh, to ensure timely submission of the NOA. Once you've verified all of your information, you can go ahead and go to the bottom and verify down here. You select verify. We'll go ahead and verify the claim as this submission will be timely. And you'll see now that we do have a checkbox to be able to submit that NOA. Once we select, we can identify that that will be a claim that we are selecting to submit and submit that through. Once we submit our NOA, claim to CMS, we will be able to navigate into our pending claims to track its submission. Once you're in pending claims, you'll be able to utilize your toolbar to identify any claims that you may have recently submitted. You may also filter through to identify your NOAs, finals, or managed care claims. We are particularly focused on our NOA, so we'll identify that. And we do know that we have sent that information out recently. Here is an example of a patient whose NOA we submitted. You'll see that we do have that status here available to you to review. From here, you can also navigate to the claims history. Once you're in the billing claims history and you've identified the patient that you want to review, you're able to see those episodes uh, for your current patient. For this particular patient, the episode began January the 1st of 2022, so that NOA has been created and submitted. We do identify here that there was a build date of 1-4-2022 and that we are pending that final for submission. In the subsequent period, you'll notice that the only claim available is the final. This has already been created. As we know, this is automatically created when we have created our episode and is available for review once the billing period is over. Here in your claims history is where your final views for patient claims are available once you have posted payment and updated any patient information. If you have any additional questions about the notice of admission or any changes to our industry or our solution, be sure to utilize our help menu tab. Our help menu tab here has a link to our user community as well as our help center where you can find tons of resources for our solution as well as industry knowledge on regulatory changes and updates. Our user community will allow for you to talk to other user, users of Access Home Health uh, for help suggestions and ease of navigation within the solution. 
Don't forget that our live support is always available for you as well uh, if you ever have any questions uh, during business hours. Also, don't forget to check our recent software updates to ensure that you are educated on the latest changes within the Access Home Health solution. And that wraps up our industry and solution review of our notice of admission. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.